guys, Alexis Yudas here, along with my usual partner in crime, Rodrigo yeah, Faiz, the are. aftermath of the Supercopa de España final, El Clásico, another El Clásico in the desert, Real Madrid Barcelona, and Barcelona with an absolutely commanding dominant win, Rodri, and I had Barca as favorites, I'm just going to give myself props, I had Barca as slight favorites, uh, but this was a dominant performance, one that I don't think we've seen Barcelona dominate Real Madrid in this way in a hot minute. Uh, did it surprise you? Uh, well, it surprised me a little bit. Not for Barca because I, I, I thought and I was confident on Xavi that they were going to have the ball possession and they were going to be really quick, you know, with, with Pedri, with Gabi. Mm. The thing is that, you know, I think Real Madrid surprised me a lot because I didn't expect this lack of personality on the field by Ancelotti's uh, guys. You know, it's like, okay, Barca played really well, mm -hmm. but it's like, like Real Madrid didn't play tonight. At all, they didn't you know, show up at just all. Like, I got a flight here, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of mosquitoes, mosquitoes here. It's been yeah, raining sorry. here yeah, in rain. Riyadh. I know, it's probably going to rain again soon. Um, but that's something that I agree with. I remember in the semifinals, you know, we, we yeah. got to speak to Thibaut Courtois mm -hmm. after, and he, he thought that they were wasteful in possession. He said they had no urgency on the ball. It's actually been a number of games, believe it or not, that Real Madrid have not scored uh, from open play. And we know all of the injuries that they have. No Alaba, no Chuameni as well. Um, then they lost Lucas Vasquez as well as after he sprained his ankle in the semifinal. But Again, when I spoke to Carlo Ancelotti after this one, he said we were horrible in defense and that yeah. once they went down 2-0, they just couldn't recover, which again, this is a team that's got Vinny Jr., that's got Karim Benzema on there, that's got Fede Valverde, who, you know, we rate highly. And it's just weird that they couldn't find that fight back. Well, first of all, because I think uh, their physicality now at the moment is like they are really tired. And if you saw uh, Luka Modric's face uh, right after being yeah. substituted, he, he was like, man, it's, it's impossible, I can't get on. And, and then if you sum this to the defense, I mean, you know, the right back, the left back, they're not even the shadow of what they used to be. Mm. I mean, and I'm not going to say in that maybe three, four years ago, they were at the highest level. I'm talking about last season. And these are the same men that won Champions League and La Liga four games in advance. Mm -hmm. so that's why, And the know, Supercopa. And the Supercopa, indeed. And they uh, got Barcelona uh, out of the last Supercopa. So that's why this is something strange about physicality, about mentality, mm -hmm. because I think uh, Real Madrid players, when they don't get to get the ball, they just go like this, which is something weird for a Real Madrid player. And then, you know, like there are so many players that they need to grow a little bit and mm. they don't do, the, or, or, or they don't make that step ahead and they need to do that. They do need to do that. It's surprising uh, state of affairs right now at Real Madrid. I know they have a lot of uh, injuries, but as Courtois told us in the semi-final, he says that, you know, just saying that they're not playing well because of the injuries is a weak excuse because they have a squad and everybody on that squad is capable of putting out better performances than what we've seen so far from Real Madrid. But we could sit here and talk about Madrid's problems. It's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back in the league, if they do any at all, and the Champions League as well. But we cannot take away from the champions. Let's talk about them, Barcelona, yeah. because I kept saying all week that since I've been talking to Xavi every single day, which I have been talking to Xavi every I'm single here, day. I'm here, sorry, Xavi. You know, I know I'm in your in your place. I mean, he deserves I to be here. No, he main. deserves to be here. I've been talking to Xavi every day, and since day one, yeah. he says Barcelona are passing through a beautiful moment, a special moment. Now yeah, he says definitely. finally they feel like a team, like a unit, and I think that showed today. Yeah, I mean, Barca, I think they played as a team, you know, for the whole season. But in some points of the season, they had like a lack of quality due to injuries or, you know, some circumstances around the, the, the squad that they didn't get advantage from. So that's why, you know, uh, Barca, for the first time ever, I think they play a very complete game. Because, yeah. for example, against Atletico Madrid, they play well in the first uh, half of the, I mean, the first 30 minutes of the game against Vegas they played really well in the first half and mm -hmm. then you know like they, they couldn't sustain were... it yeah sure that was the key Pedri said us on ESPN and now they were really good from the very first minute till the ninth minute ninth was... minute it was amazing to see and one of the things that surprised me, not surprised me, but we finally saw from Barcelona as well. I thought against Betis defensively, they looked a bit nervous at times when Betis sure. would get them on the counter. They were all running back, but they, they were almost afraid to make tackles. And I said, oh, if you do that against Madrid or if you're that nervous against Madrid, they're going to punish you. And now I remember seeing Valverde and Vinny Jr. trying to get the ball to Benzema a couple of times in the box here. And as soon as Benzema got the, bo the ball, 
three Barca defenders just jumped on him. They were they so were much really more quick. proactive, which Xavi did say was something that they worked on as well and that he spoke to them about uh, before this final. So everything's paid off. Barcelona in a beautiful moment, much deserved, as Xavi said. It was a fairy tale dream Fair ending enough. as he gets his first trophy as Barcelona manager and in the Middle East as well, which is where yeah. he started his managerial career over in Qatar, which is just about 40 minutes away by plane. Now, before we go, uh, the Middle East now is Cristiano Ronaldo's new home. We've been on Cristiano watch all week long. Um, he managed to go pay a visit to Real Madrid as well. What do you make of it, Rodri? Because you're staying to kind of try to catch the big man. Yeah, I'm going to be here uh, till Friday. You know, I really like Saudi Arabia, so that's, when I, that's why I'm, I'm going to stay here. And the thing is that, you know, we're going to watch that historical game in between Cristiano Ronaldo and Leo Messi on Thursday. We're going to be here with ESPN. And the thing is that, you know, the new host of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I mean, it's good. It's good. They have money. They know how to invest. Yeah. You know, Al Nasser looks like a pretty great project. Is he going to be the top scorer of this league? Yeah, from what sure, you see? sure. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. He's going to be the, the main one. You know. You know, even Easily. those guys, they, they agree with me. So yeah, Even those guys. Yeah, everyone's here excited to see Cristiano Ronaldo, but now they're still celebrating what was a stunning win from Barcelona in the Supercopa de España. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.